Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel where we discuss Python, metrics, and data visualizations. Today we're talking about the Seaborn LM plot. So LM plot stands for linear model plot. With it, you'll be able to create linear models for your data, just like with the Seaborn reg plot. But you'll also have access to Seaborn's facet grid, which means you can create small multiples of many reg plots with just one line of code. So let's dive into the coding basics of the Seaborn LM plot. So let's go ahead and create an LM plot using Seaborn. By the way, all of the code I'm about to show you is available on my GitHub page. So first I'll just import the Seaborn library, and then I'm loading in some data that actually come from the Seaborn library. These data are about penguins, and we'll just save that in a pandas data frame called df. I'll go ahead and set my styling to be white, and now I'm ready to create my very first LM plot. To do that, I just reference the Seaborn library and the LM plot function. Now I need a few arguments, basically just to tell Seaborn which data I want to plot. So let's put on the x-axis the Kalman length of these penguins. So this is just a name of one of the columns in my data frame, and on the y I'll do the Kalman depth. And I also need to say where these data come from. These data are from the data frame df. And so again, x and y here just refer to column names from df, the pandas data frame. There we go. So there's my first lm plot. And so what you're seeing here, lm stands for linear model. And this really is, it's building a linear model for these data. Basically, how does y relate to x? We see a scatter plot with all the observations, and we have this nice line plot that's been fitted to our data. We also have these bands about our line, and those are created using a process called bootstrapping. So the other thing you might notice here, this plot so far looks pretty much identical to the reg plot. So we're basically building a reg plot so far. The LM plot also has several different ways that you can show off categorical variables in your plots. And one way that's pretty common to do that is to assign a hue or a color to each different category. So let's try that. Let's go ahead and set the hue to be the species of these penguins. And this is just another Another column in that data frame. So an interesting thing happened here. If you remember before, the line that we had fitted to these data was slanting downward, indicating that there was a negative correlation between these two variables. Now all of our lines are slanting upward, and this is the, this is the true relationship between length and depth of the Kalman. So what we're experiencing here is something called Simpson's paradox. Each of the individual groups are displaying this appropriate positive correlation, but if we were just to plot those data overall, we would actually see negative correlation. But that aside, you can see what Seaborn's done for each of these different penguin species. It has given it a color and fitted a separate linear model to each of those subgroups. Another way that you might distinguish your different categories is to assign them different markers. So let's try that as well. So this marker is going to go along with hue, so whichever hue categories we have here. So what you'll do now is just pass in a list of the different marker types you want. So let's say we want uh, circles for the first group, X's for the second, and then diamonds for the final group. So it's just a list of how I would like those markers to appear, and you'll see that now Seaborn has applied those different markers to my three different groups. This could also be super helpful if your figure were going to be, say, printed out in black and white. You would be able to still distinguish those groups even though color is no longer an option. So hue is great for demonstrating categorical variables, but what happens if we have a lot of categories? Those colors can start to get really overwhelming. Wouldn't it be great instead if we could separate those out so that we have each category in its own small multiple? That's exactly what you can do with the facet grid options of the Seaborn LM plot. So let's check that out in the code. So, so far the plots that we've been building have looked pretty much identical to the red plot, but let's see something that actually distinguishes the LM plot, and that's the idea of building small multiples via the facet grid. Okay, so what we have right now, we have our three different penguin species, and we've built a linear regression model for each of those three different species. What I can do with the LM plot is actually separate these out into three different small multiples. So let me show you how this looks. What I would do is reference this one other keyword argument called call, and I can assign this to whichever categorical column I want, but let's say I also put it to be the species. 
Now you'll see that I have one separate small plot for each of those different penguin species. So this is going to be really, really helpful if you happen to have a lot of different categories, if you have a lot of data and everything's a little too jumbled, this could help you distinguish that a little bit more. So, so far we've used the call argument to separate out one different figure for each of the species. But you also have this second option called row, and you can assign this to a totally different categorical feature, let's say the penguin sex. So what this will do now is break down all of your data by species across the columns and sex across the row. So now we have the males and then the females in the bottom row. By the way, you may have noticed that there's a lot of white space around these figures, and that's because the linear model is not spanning across the entire range. It's really just spanning the range of the data. So one thing you could do if you prefer to not have that, there's an argument called truncate, and you can set that to false. Now you can have that line spanning across the entire range if that's what you'd prefer. So that's the core of the Seaborn LM plot. It combines the red plot with the facet grid. But the LM plot has even more functionality. Let's check out some additional options as well as some styling that you can do. So there's just a couple of extra bits of functionality that I wanted to show you for LM plot because I think this tool is super powerful. Okay, the first one is called X bins. So let's say that we have our data like these and we have our LM plot uh, for our penguins data. We're still doing common depth and common length. I'm actually going to filter down to only the chin strap penguins. And one simple way to do that is really just to use pandas here. So right now I have the full data frame, but I could filter that down to only the chin straps by referencing the species column and saying that must be equal to chin strap. Okay, so let's see what X bins does. Right now I have data across the entire range, but X bins allows me to bin up some of that data if I'd prefer. So let's try to create five bins for our data. And there we go. So this is just a different style. If you happen to have like a lot of data and you wanted to kind of bucket some of that up, you could create these bins across the range. This makes your visual a little bit cleaner, especially if you had a lot of points. One interesting thing to note is we actually have bootstrapping happening two different ways. Right now we have the bootstrapping for the line. We also have bootstrapping across these ranges. So that dot is going to be at the average value of the data in that bucket but you'll also get the 95% confidence interval, which is created using bootstrapping. The other really powerful thing about the LM model, as well as the reg plot, is that you can actually do other types of modeling. It doesn't have to be strict linear regression. There are a couple other options for you. One of them is logistic regression. So I'm going to create a separate column here. This is called sex binary, and I'm basically just mapping true or false. Is this penguin identified as a male or not? So if you look at my data now, I have this new column where I'm just assigning trues and falses. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to build a model based on this column as my target output. So I need to have some kind of zeros and ones or trues and falses in that column. Let's go ahead and create a logistic regression model for this binary column based on the body mass of the penguin. So basically what I'm saying is, can I use the body mass to predict if this penguin is a male or female? The way to do that, I can reference my two columns of interest. X is going to be the body mass and Y is going to be that new column I just created, the sex binary. Okay, so I still reference my data, which is my data frame, and then I need one additional argument here. I also need to say that I'm building a logistic regression model, so I set logistic to be true. One final argument that might be helpful for you is to decrease the number of bootstraps. Uh, this is recommended by the Seaborn author, so instead of using 1,000 different bootstraps for this, we're going to just use 100 to save time. So there we go. This is what building a logistic logistic regression model looks like with the LM plot. And to make this even more powerful, you still have access to things like hue and call. So let's go ahead and set the hue to be the species of the penguin and also the column for the facet grid to be the species. Let's see what this looks like. Now we're going to be building one separate logistic regression model for each of the three different species. So let's close out this video with just a bit of styling that you can do. If you want to control what those dots look like, there is an argument called scatter keywords. And basically any of the keys that you're passing in here are arguments that can control scatter points. So S, for example, is the size. Let's bump that up. And we can also change maybe the edge color of each of these points. But the thing to remember here is that this is only controlling whatever happens on the dots. It does not affect the line. So now we have much bigger points and we also have a black line circling each of those points. And you could go on styling those however you'd like. 
Just like there's one for scatter keywords, there's another argument called line keywords, and this will control what the line looks like. So again, this accepts a dictionary. Now we're passing in keys that reference arguments that can control lines. For example, line width is one that's really popular, LW. Let's bump that up to five, say. So we have a thicker line there, and we can also control, let's say, the line style. And here we're passing in a string to represent the style that we would like. So a nice dot dash, and you could continue styling that line however you like. Just remember that all of these arguments specifically go along with the line. So let's say I change something like the color. This is actually only going to change the color of the line. And the final thing I wanted to mention here as far as styling goes is that this LM plot returns a facet grid object. So let's say that we call the output of this function G. This returns an object, and if I check the type of G, we are dealing with a facet grid object. So just like the cat plot and the rel plot, the LM plot is also returning a facet grid object. It is built on top of the facet grid. What that means for us is that we can continue styling the facet grid based on that object G. So let's go ahead and try to change, let's say, the titles. There's several different methods and properties that you can access here, but one of them is called set titles, and this can take in a column template. You can basically write out how you'd like a template to look for each of these titles on each of the facets. So for us, let's go ahead and put the column name, and then we'll write the word penguins. So this column name here is actually referring to which species that we're dealing with. And you'll see that we'll have each species name and the word penguins in each of those titles. And let's try one more here. There's another one called set X labels. And the nice thing about this one, you'll see that I'll just set the X labels once and then that will update on all of my facets. So let's change this to column depth. And there we go. We'll see column depth has been updated on all three of my facets. So I hope you enjoyed learning all about the Seaborn LM plot. If you want to learn more about the underlying red plot or the facet grid, go ahead and check out my videos about those. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Thanks.